The National Emergency Management Agency has issued a red alert on flooding in 102 local government areas in 28 states. This was disclosed in the 2020 annual flood outlook released by the Nigeria Meteorological Agency and the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency. Now, 275 local government areas in 36 states and the FCT fall within the moderately probable flood risks area while uh, 397 local government areas fall within the low probable flood risk areas. In Lagos, residents of four local government areas, especially those living on flood plains, have been told to vacate their homes immediately. These predictions are expected to have different kinds of impact on agriculture, water resources, health, transportation, and other infrastructure. Joining us now on Skype is environmentalist and uh, MD CEO, Mark Press West Africa Limited, Ido Salau. Uh, Ido, good morning. It's good to have you join us now. Good morning. Yes. How are you? All right. Now, the, the, the Nigerians are really concerned. Every year we come up with this, uh, the, the, the agencies, the weather agencies come up with these projections and, or predictions, and they really happen the way that they say it in most cases. But... The critical thing is when they talk about uh, telling Nigerians to evacuate where they are or vacate where they are and relocate somewhere else, I wonder how easy that is. Ido, are you there? Yes, I'm there. I can hear you. Exactly. So I I'm wondering how easy it is to, uh, to, to abide by the advice that people should relocate or leave where they are because they live in a flood-prone area, to somewhere else? Uh, Mike, it's just so sad that this is happening. It's just so sad that this is happening at this moment. Yes, it's just so sad that this is happening at this moment. That the best option for them truly is to relocate. That is the best option. And the Labour State government has come out with a warning about a week or two weeks ago that people living on the flood prone area to please back in because the state government is overwhelmed with this series of flooding that is confronting them right now. Now, what do they need to do? They can't start dredging now in the rainy season. We are in the heat of the rainy season. They cannot start dredging. They can't do anything. The only thing they can do right now is to respond to people that will be affected by this flood. Because the warning sign has been given. We are going to have rainy days in Nigeria, in Nigeria particularly in the south, for between 210 and 280 days. And it's going to be heavy. Now, the drainage channel that's supposed to be emptying this Every excess water into the river, into the lagoon, into the ocean, they are still set up. They are blocked. So, and again, the situation in the country at City Nigeria, on the most serious note, is so sad. We are in this problem together. It's only God that can save us. Because of the situation we find ourselves during this COVID-19 pandemic, nobody planned for every flooding that will happen this way. But we are used to have time in Nigeria. Only God can save us. People, economically, they have problems. Now, another aspect of the effect of this flooding is that's supposed to be positive for Nigeria, which is the food for food security in the agricultural se sector. When people couldn't even go out to go and farm, how would they utilize this water for purpose of, of for the good purpose that is meant during the initiative that's supposed to be a proper harvest for farmers and uh, people in the agricultural sector. Well, I don't know where the government wants to go about it, how they want to go about it, but it's just so sad that uh, we are all in this trouble together. All right, uh, uh, quickly, before, before we let you go, I'm still talking about the impact uh, because uh, it is said that uh, the prediction is expected to impact uh, various sectors agriculture, which you have mentioned, water resources. Let's look at the health, transportation, as well as infrastructure at this point. How would this impact that? The transportation aspect is this. Remember, before the rainy season started, government wanted to embark on road construction. 
before we start the rainy season, before we enter the rainy season. In the rainy season, there is no way they can do any construction of roads or any infrastructure or transportation infrastructure. When the city is flooded, there is going to be an economic uh, impact because nobody will be able to move from one place to the other. So that is one negative impact of flooding on the transportation system. You remember what happened two weeks ago? The old levels were standstill. People lost one hour in the traffic. So these are one of the major problems. Another one is that more roads will be devastated. You have problem of uh, infrastructure decay. Because this impact of the flooding will affect the roads, the existing roads that have already been uh, having problems. So, and there's nothing government can do except the rain subside. So for now, we are just going to bear it with government. By just pray, they will be able to learn mm. from this little from this problem now. As soon as the rain subsides, they will be able to maybe marshal out all their efforts to make sure that infrastructure development on road and right. other network, adjoining road, major road, and feeder road, they carry it out immediately. Okay. Sorry, we, we, but we have, we have to leave it here now. Uh, we have to leave it here now. Sorry. Uh, Idou Salau, thank you so much for talking to us. And thanks for your insight on this.